Hello, I'm Caroline and I am an early years professional. I also am a primary school tutor and some of you may be familiar with some of the videos that I've been uploading recently regarding um, speech and language skills for preschool children. So I've kind of been talking to lots of people and doing lots of tutoring over Zoom, etc. And yeah, just kind of some of the questions and concerns that parents have. I thought that I would jump on and it might be useful for some other parents to hear some advice about how you can be getting your child school ready. So um, this time of year within schools um, is very much about transition. So obviously our children who were in day nurseries or school nurseries have had that kind of whipped away from them. So I just wanted to give you some um, top tips about what you can do to help your child at home to get ready for the transition, hopefully in September. So um, role playing is a really great thing that you can be doing with your child at the moment, as well as playing board games. So um, within role play, you can get lots of rich language and real life language in there. You can have real items. You can have your child help you to do the baking and then they can take that away to their own kitchen. But you can kind of get real good language in like sieving, grating, chopping, rolling, pressing, all this, all this sort of language that we don't necessarily use whilst they're playing normally. Um, you could do a doctor's role play uh, where you could again get some really good language like thermometer, stethoscope, bandages, again all language that they're not exposed to um, day to day. So reading again is just such a passion of mine and something that should be done every day as often as possible and as often as your child wants. So um, you can use books to really help language. And also, whilst you are reading, you can incorporate some really good rhyming books or some nursery rhyme stories where your child, rhyming and rhythm is a really big thing. Um, at the end of nursery, getting them ready for being able to read when they are in reception. So you could also, um, on some of the CVC words, which are the three letter words like sun, sat, fat, hat, you could sound talk these words. And um, the way that we do that is by making the phonetical sounds and um, but spacing them out so um you can refer to this as robot talking or sound talking so um i'm going to give you a little example of that so for example the word cat would be k -a -t. see if your child can hear all those sounds and blend them together that's going to help them so much and they need to be able to hear the sounds that the letters make before they recognize them and um, behind me i have got the order of what they will be learning um, in school with regards to the letter order it's not abc so we'll talk about that again in a minute but you can talk about um initial initial sounds of words so car begins with k and dog begins with d and from there you can go on to like your fine motor skills with them so you can write shopping lists you could do a pretend register um and play schools with with teddies etc so they get used to some of the routines that will happen and um, whilst they are at school so along with these fine motor skills, colouring is really important. We need to get the strength in their fingers up so they are ready to write. Um, playing with Play-Doh, tweezers, Lego, puzzles. There's all sorts of things that can make the fine motor skills um, as strong as possible. So your child will have a strong grip with the pencil. You may find that they're holding a pencil like this or tripod grip. The aim i'm just going to pick a pen up is for them to hold with two pencils which we call beaky fingers so um you could do a little bit of practicing of that and um, their light their touch will probably be quite light um because they haven't got the strength yet but yeah every now and again just say when you're at school you have to use your beaky fingers so um yeah palmer grip is kind of what they do around about the age of two so we need to try to get them out of that habit and even if they're using two or three fingers um that's better than the palmer grip and if your child 
is able, then see if they can do it with beaky fingers. Now, they're not expected to be able to write their name. Some children can, some children can't. Um, you can do kind of joining the dots, going over their names, um, or I really like to use a system called rainbow writing. So you can use various highlighter pens. You can buy the Bic highlighters, which are pen shaped. Um, so that's easier for them to hold than the chunky highlighters. And so you can write in yellow, they can write over in pink and green, and then you have this beautiful rainbow writing and it's kind of quite um, inspiring for them. So uh, from fine motor skills, next I wanna talk about gross motor skills and the importance of your child being physically strong, which again is going to help all their, their fine motor skills. So um, some ways that you can prepare them physically with their gross motor skills is to use monkey bars, um, the old fashioned hands on the ground, someone behind holding your legs doing a wheelbarrow. You can do lots of pretending to be animals on all fours. Um, lots of children skip the crawling stage and um, this is really crucial. There's been lots of evidence and research into children who don't crawl being later writers. So um, I found that really interesting. And um, as years have gone on and the more learning I've done in courses, etc., it kind of really makes sense because they're using their upper body whilst they are crawling. So um, another really good resource, which you can just um, find on YouTube, is something called Do Disco. So um, there's a bit of a crazy lady on YouTube who um, uses Play-Doh with music in the background to kind of pinch and squeeze and roll. Um, you can do it yourself once you've you've got the movements from her um, to songs that the children like, and that could be a really nice daily activity. You could put marbles into Play-Doh and then give them tweezers to try and pull them out. Um, all sorts of fun like that. So if you are worried about your child's fine motor skills, um, they're just a few ideas for you. So um, another really important um, thing to get them ready for school is for them to be able to um, have good self-care skills. So as much as you can when it's bath time in the morning, get them to take their clothes off and to attempt to put them on by themselves. Uh, there is going to be a class of 30 children. And when it comes to getting coats, welly boots, shoes, that sort of thing on, um, your child's going to be able to get out to play a lot quicker if they are independent and able to do that themselves. Um, also, obviously, one major tip is don't buy them school trousers that have a button or a buckle and make, or a zip even just make sure you get elasticated trousers so um because they need to be independent and going to the toilet as much as possible so they can pull them up and down themselves and please don't buy your child lamb shoes with laces uh it takes up so much of the adult's time and if it has if they have velcro or slip on shoes they will be able to do that themselves but i really recommend velcro just because it gives them some security when they're running about and they won't hurt themselves um so following two part instructions so instructions with two steps can you go and get your coat and put it on as simple as that and just see if your child is able to follow those two part instructions because we do so much for them because we're always rushing but um, as we've got the time and we're at home uh, give your child the opportunity to practice those sorts of skills um, or can you go and get your drink and bring me my keys uh, two part instructions they're having to remember recall as they're doing it and then bring it back to you um, you'll be surprised how tricky they find those sorts of things so emotionally are hoping you're going to be able to have lots of play dates, etc., in the upcoming weeks with peers of um, a similar age to them because they just learn so much from each other and they've obviously all been out of the habit. They're just at home with family. They need to be able to mix with other people and communicate with them, share, etc. But also understanding their own emotions. They are going to find things frustrating at the age of um, four, coming up five, and it's really important that they're able to talk about what has happened to the teacher in the best way that they can. 
So when something happens, try to calm them down as quickly as possible. You can teach them blowing bubbles, something along those lines. Now tell me what's happened so I can help. Um, They need to learn phrases like kind hands. You must have kind hands, no hitting and pushing and being able to wait their turn, which they'll learn from you playing board games, etc. with them. So I think I have covered all the things that you can be doing at home. And um, I thought I'd share with you the Letters and Sounds website for those of you whose child perhaps has been at a day nursery and they have learnt a lot of the phase one phonic skills where their listening is really tuned in. They can do toy talking, they can do rhyming, finish a rhyming tree, etc. The first um, letters that they are going to be learning, um, I've got up here on my board. So we've got um, set one. And um, as I say, you'll be surprised to hear that they don't learn it in the order of the alphabet. And the first lot of letters um, are S-A-T-P. So um, they'll be learning what the letter looks like and they'll be learning what it sounds like. So um, I am going to do another video on all the letter sounds, but just to give you a little heads up, um, one of the things that we really encountered um, whilst I was at schools um, was parents um, slurring the sounds, so not saying the pure sound. So for example, you might say s, um, you might say t, now, that actually, if a child was to write it, they would write s, s, u, because the pure sound is s. So I'm just going to do set one and set two, I promise, and then we'll do another video. So we've got s, a, t, p. So you can hear it's quite quiet and it's quite pure, um, but I'm certainly saying p and not p. So then we've got I, n, m, and d. So that is set one and set two that they will be learning um, in reception. And what I'll do is a separate post because I feel like this is getting quite long. Um, I will do a separate post for you. And um, the website is letters and sounds forward slash gov.uk. So you can download the phonics learning yourself. So the whole letters and sound booklet, which has all the kinds of activities and recommendations of how to teach children to learn phonics in there. So um, I'm sure a lot of you have got time to read at the moment. So it would be a really good thing for you to become familiar with because things have changed so much um, for our young children and the way that they are taught to read and write. Okay, I hope you found that useful. And if you have any questions, put it in the comments and I will do my best to get back and answer it. And as I say, I will follow up with another video regarding how we say the sound so you can have a practice yourself. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.